seen and we do join in with your prayers and do hope that the next 50 years for Pakistan are full of growth and development and prosperity and we, if, if we are there, when we meet, then we talk about how fantastic the past 50 years for Pakistan have been. Now, ladies and gentlemen, is the time to invite our chief guest. Our chief guest for today is Mr. Justice Sheikh Azmat Saeed. Uh, Justice Sheikh Azmat Saeed is the senior most judge at the Lahore High Court among 38 judges. As a judge, he has won the hearts of lawyers and his colleagues who honor him for what he is, a man of integrity. Integrity with all capital letters. Okay. Mr. J uh, Said has been appointed as legal advisor to LDA, as special prosecutor at the Saab Bureau, member of the legal team prosecuting high-profile cases before the LHC, and as deputy prosecutor general NAB. He has also taught at Kaide Azam Law College, and he has been nominated as member of the Board of Governors of NCA. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice, Sheikh Azmat Saeed. Sheikh Azmat Saeed. Ladies and gentlemen, it's such a pleasure and an honor to be here, but I hate being the last speaker. It reminds me of Lord Alfred Tennyson, who said, my best thoughts were stolen by the ancients. My best thoughts have been stolen by the previous speakers. But I still have a few things to say, which will only be a few things, because after me there is dinner. And I hate standing between an audience and dinner, especially in Lahore. <laughs> may we all we are all familiar with an ancient Chinese curse, may you, which goes, "May you live in interesting times." Well, we are certainly living in interesting times, aren't we? You pick up any newspaper and you pick up, switch on any television channels. There's excitement galore. There's never a dull moment. It is that excitement and, and turmoil and turbulation which has perhaps inspired the theme of today's conference. I find it rather strange, but not too many years ago, it was predicted by a Japanese, or at least a Jap by intellectual of Japanese origin, the end of history. We were told, and it was predicted, that political activists would be replaced by managers and floral neckties. We were told it was predicted of a, not a brave but a boring new world would come, where political manifestos would be replaced by balance sheets and stability would be, would be based on the strength or the turmoil of the marketplace. And before the ink was dry on the thesis of the latter-day Japanese Nostradamus, we were confronted and we are confronted internationally with the worst economic scene in half a century. Branded, for want of a better word, branded banks and blue chip financial companies, say that with sarcasm, has fallen like nine pins. Countries which have been touted as the economic miracle of our times are on the verge of bankruptcy, or virtually bankrupt. The question which is coming forth and is being debated is it a systemic failure or a crisis of incompetence? People are asking, and the debate rages, is it the failure of capitalism or the failure of capitalists? I do not want to enter into this debate today or take issue with this argument, certainly not today. But one thing has come, and I can say this, this is the one truth that has surfaced, I can say this without fear of contradiction that economic and financial activity has to be regulated. Even countries which took an ideological stand regarding free enterprise and thus affair have dealt, have instituted 
state intervention and regulation. It is not only financial activity and financial institutions that need to be regulated, but also, in fact, experience tells us all human activity needs to be regulated, including all human relations. It is necessary for good order. Good reg regulation, too much or too little regulation is up, to is up for debate. But be that as it may, all human activity and all human relations, whether commercial, financial, social, political, or even matrimonial, need to be regulated. This regulation, ladies and gentlemen, is law. This regulation is law. This is what sex gives the parameters in which human endeavor, with all its liberties, with all its freedoms, needs to be exercised. And violating these boundaries have consequences, including penal consequences. You cannot create these boundaries. Thou shalt not steal is a boundary unless there is the force of the state behind it. Moral and ethical codes do not work in this world. And that is what law in a state or a country is. But the tragedy in Pakistan, where we live in very interesting times, is that we have forgotten the lessons of